Elicit and SciSpace are both great softwares to utilize AI to both find literature and extract information from them. In this video, I want to do a deep dive into these two different softwares so that you can figure out which one may actually be best for you and your own workflow. So looking at both of these, you can see whenever you come to their homepage, they're kind of the same, but kind of different. So within SciSpace, you have their literature review. You can ask questions on a PDF, extract data, or use the paraphraser. And then there are additional features as well. If you go into here, we're mainly going to focus on the literature review and the chatting with PDFs or extracting data from a PDFs because that's what's consistent between both Elicit and SciSpace. However, SciSpace does have an AI detector, a paraphraser, and a citation generator, citation booster, which I'm not going to really talk about in this video. But if you're curious about it, let me know and I may create like a short video on some of those features later on. On the other hand, Elicit has now adopted this notebook structure. Instead of having it to where you can only do one step at a time, it now has a notebook structure which allows you to do multiple steps and incorporate between those steps, which is a bit of a different workflow than SciSpace. So I'm going to go ahead and add a notebook title in here, and I'm going to do this literature search on steroid analysis by Ion Mobility. So now we can use the find papers and elicit or the literature review in SciSpace to find articles relevant. So for both of these, I'm going to ask it the exact same question phrased the exact same way. So what is the effect of metal adduction on steroid analysis by Ion Mobility Spectrometry? And you can see it's the exact same in both. So then I'm just going to go ahead and press enter in SciSpace to have that run and click this button in Elicit to have that run. If while working with AI, you really want to be able to figure out what research papers to read, how to find them or how to find your ideas, make sure you download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. So these are in general taking about the same time to load and to do their analysis. So the first thing we get is a summary up here, and then we're going to get different articles relevant. So we can see that some of these initial articles are the same. As we go down, what we're finding is that these are not as related to metal adduction. So like this one's metal adduction, but not in steroids. And so we're kind of losing the ability to be as close knit to the question that we asked. We really have three articles or papers here that are really relevant to the question that we asked. We have a few more in Elicit that's actually talking about metal adduction versus SciSpace. There's not as many that specifically are talking about that. And it's giving us a lot of what I would call noise. So a lot of articles that aren't really related to the real question. So now the different features that we have available to us here, right? So we have the summary that's available. And then it gives us the different papers and it gives us columns or insights from these papers. So you can see there's different columns here. So I can add in columns as well. And then over here, I can also, if I scroll over, I can add in these columns here or type in a new column and I can type in a new column here. So that's pretty consistent. So I would say like the ability to search is consistent between the two, the ability to add columns is consistent as well. And it does give a summary for both. So you can sort in both. So you can see this is sorted by most relevant. This one's also sorted by relevance over here. The ability to filter. So you can see this filter has PDF, open access, top tier papers. You can filter by year, publication type, keywords, journals, and conferences. And these filters, you get something very similar. So you get abstract keywords, does and does not contain. You get the study type instead of the publication type and then the publication year. And then you also get whether it has a PDF or not. So you don't necessarily get if it's open access or considered a top tier paper or journal or the journals or conferences. You can't filter for that within Elicit. Now, another feature that both Elicit and SciSpace has is they have the ability to export. But both of these ability to export is limited to their paid plans. So if you are on their free plan, you cannot actually export these tables out of Elicit or SciSpace. You have to get on their paid plan to be able to edit. And you can see that you can export as an RIS, a CSV file, or a BIB file. And that's the same thing over here. Instead of a CSV file, you can also export as an Excel file if that's important to you within SciSpace. So now we're going to get into where these really start diverging in features. So where these really start to diverge is that Elicit has a notebook set up. So for example, if I wanted to just select the ones that I actually wanted, so we're going to select these four here. 
So once I select these, a feature does come up that says show more like these. And so if I do that, you can see now when I scroll down, there's additional ones. That's one way to be able to find similar papers based off of like the few that it actually pulled up that was good. Now to do things with these papers, I need to add in a new step. And so it, what this happens is it's gonna scroll to the bottom. When I click add a new step, what I can do is I'm going to create a new table from the selected papers. So you can see I now have a new table down here that just has the papers that I want with it. And I'm gonna collapse this step up here. So I have this step down here. Now over here, what I have is I don't really have a way to do that. I can select these papers. So let's select a few, we'll select these three. And so this also has that show more like selected that I can click and it's adding more down here. And for most of this, it doesn't really look like we're getting anything that's really what I was hoping for. So we're gonna stick with those three again. I'm gonna reselect them. So with these three, I wanna add them to a specific collection and that's how I would be able to do more specifically with them. So to do that, I'm gonna click a bookmark and I'm gonna say create a new collection. So I'm just gonna give my new collection a title and I'm gonna create that and then I'm gonna add them to that collection. So now if I go to my library, I'm gonna to switch to folders and I'm gonna find that collection I just created. And now I have those in here, just like I did within here. The next thing that I might wanna do is be able to chat with these different papers. So the way to chat with an illicit is you would add a new step and specifically I'm gonna select these papers again. And I'm gonna click add a new step and I'm gonna say chat with papers. And so it's putting all of these papers within a chat and then I can ask my question in here and then I can just press, I'm gonna copy this before so I can run the same thing on the size space. So then I can press enter. And now with size space, what I do is I hit this co-pilot up here. So I ask a question on this folder and I can paste that in here and run it. And so this is specifically asking it on the articles that are within this specific folder. And you can see I'm getting the three different ways that it's been used. So formation of multi-steroid metal adducts, improved resolution between steroid epimers, and then baseline resolution of isomers. And in this one, I'm getting more like an entire like essay on it more than like bullet points. So this looks like it mainly is giving me like kind of an introductory sentence. It talks about using it in twins, which is one type of eye mobility, and then talks about using it in DTIMS, which is another type. And so this is kind of the different ways that you would be able to chat with a PDF within both of these systems. And then the final thing we really wanna look at is the ability to extract data. So once I have this information in here and you, if you want this to be more accurate, you can actually import in PDF. So if I come in here, I can say extract data from uploaded papers. And you can see that I have one paper in here if I wanna upload another. So let's upload just to make it consistent across both. Let's upload one paper to both of them. So I'm gonna upload that paper here and click upload PDFs. And then if I'm in here, I'm actually going to, I can upload a PDF within here. So I'm uploading a PDF to both. So I'm gonna click this PDF and go ahead and click next. And now we're gonna add columns. And this is the main place that I'm gonna compare the model. So this is just like before when we were doing this, I wanna compare it specifically, both of these have the PDF, so it's not about what they were able to get off the internet. How are they actually pulling data? So if we look over here, I'm gonna add in a few different types of columns in here. So I'm gonna add in the summarized abstract. I'm gonna add in the results, the limitations, and the methods used. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna add the summary, the main findings, the methods used is gonna be methodology, and then the limitations. So let's compare specifically for this one paper, how does it do on these different things? So now I'm gonna look at the summarized abstract. Ultimately, all of these are really similar between the two. It's just kind of whether you like it as a full text or as the summarized abstracts. And you can see here that it does give you these citations and you can locate it within the PDF, which I think is something that's kind of different between elicits and SciSpaces. So if we go to the results for SciSpace results is under results and for elicit it's under main findings. So the, with Alyssa, I think the first sentence is said a little bit weird because sodiated dimers is one of the dimeric adducts that was used to enhance it. 
And then with CCS values, I think they missed a part of the main findings, which was the fact that there was higher error with the dimeric species. So if we look at the results with size spaces, I think both of them missed the same point though that I was making earlier. So it's not that one missed it and one got it, they both missed that, that main finding that I would have pulled out as an actual researcher there. So if I go to the limitations, this says polyalanine overestimates dimer CCS leading to higher error. So that's the point that I was bringing earlier. So it did pick it up in the limitations. They're both kind of picking it up in the limitations. So with Elicit's limitation, I would say that it actually got a more holistic view of the limitations of this research and really the future directions of this research. The size spaces limitation, it only captured one of the limitations, but with that, it kind of added more specifics to it, right? So it's calling out polyalanine and it's calling out the higher error where the limitations of illicit just says the importance of good agreement. So this one, it's really, do you want a broad picture or do you want specifics, but you might be missing certain points, I think is the difference between that one there. And then if we look at the methodology, so for the methodology of illicit, all of that is true. It pulled out the specific instrument there. In this case, it's almost opposite. So illicit's giving a lot more specifics. I would say the one part that SciSpace is getting more specific is with the use of the Gaussian fit. But illicit's giving more specifics of the actual instrument used and things like that. So I almost want like a blended approach. I want both of them, like the best parts of both of them. I think for each of them, they're missing some data, but then they're also giving really specifics with other things. So I think it really depends on which one matters for you. And with all of this, again, I'm going to say that you really need to go into the papers to confirm any of this information. So this is really nice if you're trying to like theme out all of your papers for a literature review or get a broad sense of the field. But if you're ever going to cite any of this, you want to make sure you're going into the actual papers and making sure that any of this information is correct. Any of this information could be wrong. Thus far, I haven't found anything that's specifically wrong. I have found a few things that are a little bit on the confusing side is what I will say. So overall, that's really a good comparison of the different models. You can see that size spaces is going to be more bullet points than like paragraphs. And I think size spaces also include some of these citations and you can locate that information within the paper, which can make it a little bit faster for you to be able to cite. On the other hand, I think illicit it captures a little bit more. It's a little bit broader and it maybe doesn't get into the specific as many things. And it's going to be more long form text than it's going to be actual bullet points. So those are really the big differences in the model to me. I think overall, the accuracy of the information is fairly the same between both of them when given the PDF. Obviously, if you're running this just based off abstracts, you're going to lack more and more of the information because if you just use like the free text, it's not going to have the entire PDF to work with. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.